Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. And how many, with a raise of hand, is a mother? <laughs> okay, keep the hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 17, 18. Did you get I got that one. 18. Yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. Yes, we are. Yes, yes. How sure. many is a grandmother? Oh, yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 18. All right. 18 mothers, 18 grandmothers. We got 19 mothers, because I don't think I counted as many. Okay, how many are great great grandmothers? Oh, Just great first. Great grandmothers. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. Nine. That's awesome. That is awesome. Great, great, did I say? Great great, 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 great Two great, two great. Two great grandmothers. Great, great. How's that? Daryl, put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I want you to think about this. The next church is the offspring of our mothers today. Amen. Future, amen. That is great. Amen. That means the church is not going to die. That's right. Amen. The church is alive and well. And I was thinking this, a, a mother's love is so strong. And I watch a lot of outdoor videos and stuff, and I think about a mother bear, how strong her love is for her cubs, how she chases away the, the male bear and, and goes to battle for their young to keep it safe, how she trains it to go up a tree to get out of danger. That's what a true mother does. Amen. And as I was Wednesday, I'm going to tell Barb, and this is Barb's fault. I love you, Barb. But she said, you know, I like to come to church but I don't like it on Mother's Day because it's always focused on mothers. <coughs> Am I right, Barb? <laughs> yes, I'm right. Thank you. I said, well, come Sunday because it's going to be different. And it is going to be different. It's going to be on love. Amen. Because, yes, you are loved. Amen. Each and every one of us. That's mothers right. are loved. Fathers are loved. Children are loved. And what is the greatest love story that we know of? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that so, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I thought about that and I thought, wow, I don't know if I can do Because, you know, sometimes I'm not following like I need to be following. Anybody else? Amen. I'm glad I'm amongst all good saints <laughs> because I didn't see many hands going up. But I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I'm human. I stumble. I fail. I trip. I fall. I get back up with the Lord's help and I take another step. And sometimes I fall on it. But God's always there because of his love for us. Amen. To pick us up, dust us off, and let us go on. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you today of your love and your mercy upon us. God, we just ask that the Holy Spirit bless our word today, Lord. And Lord, let us live in your love and let us see your love each and every day lord as this world gets worse and worse lord 
Let your love shine brighter and brighter. Father, we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> How many of the mothers, I'm, I'm going to include the fathers too, okay? <laughs> love their kids. Most days. Most days. <laughs> How many of us get frustrated with our kids? Every day. I want to tell you, it's okay, raise your hands. <laughs> no, it's, it's, the reason I say this is because they get frustrated with you too. Amen. That's right. That's right. You know, and I think mine probably get a lot more frustrated with me than I do with them. Preach, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. They still love you. That's right. And you still love them. That's right. Don't beat yourself up because you should have done or you didn't do or, or maybe you will do. It's okay. Love is deeper than that. Amen? Amen. Love is talked about 714 times in the Bible. Yeah. So it's pretty powerful mm -hmm. what we should be doing and loving. Mm -hmm. First Peter 2 and 21. And I, I marked my Bible so I can find it easy. Er. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24. For to you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. He left us an example to follow of love. Mm -hmm. He left the example that we need to be walking in love. Yes. And it gets pretty easy to get sidetracked with what's going on. It's easy to focus on they should have done, they, they hopefully will do, but they're not going to because the Bible tells us things are going to get worse and worse. Amen. It's no shock shouldn't be. But I'm here to tell you that there is one that can love us through it. That's right. To the other side. Amen. There is one that will guide us if we will follow that will keep our eyes not focused on what's going on but the one who came to do what he did so that we can get to the other side. Matthew 26, 53 and 54. It says, or do you think that I cannot pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? And when reading this, I thought about 12 legions, which happens to be 76 or 72,000 angels. God could have called down 72,000, Jesus could have called down 72,000 angels to stop what was about to happen. But he didn't. Why? Because he loved us. That is the only way that we are going to make it to heaven is through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because he loved us enough, he wanted to go through this, didn't want to, but he Willing. chose willingly to go through Amen. what he had to bear That's right. Amen. that we could spend eternity with him. Isaiah 53, 5. 
And this is a prophetic <coughs> word here. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. Amen. Transgression, do we know what that word means? I didn't. I had to look it up. <laughs> Violating trust. Not trusting in the Lord. Jesus was wounded because of our lack of trust in God. Iniquities. Jesus was bruised because of our immoral acts and the conduct, the practice. Sin and iniquities are often used interchangeably. Because God knew who we were going to be before we were born. He knew all about it. So he sent his son. Amen? Amen. Chastisement. Jesus suffered the punishment for our sins so we could experience the forgiveness and the peace. Amen. What love. Amen. What love. And, and there is some controversial about how many stripes he took upon his back. Some say he took 40. Some say he took 39. Big deal. One more, one less. But the truth of the matter, anything over 40 probably would have killed him right then and there. Because it wasn't just like getting whipped with a whip that we see on westerns. It had broken bones, it had sharp rocks, it had glass, it had metal. And when it went into his side, they jerked it back and it started ripping and tearing. And I'm not going to go into graphic details. But it wasn't pleasant by no means. And he knew this. But yet he said, I'm going to go to that cross. I'm going to let him nail me up there. Because I love Dale. Amen. That's right. What love. And I think about how much I care for my kids. How much I want to see them get what they want. Do what they want. But the love of God is so much more. Yes, it is. And to think that he did it for each and every single one of us. Amen. And he didn't do it just to say, oh, look at me, I'm here. He did it because he truly cared. That's right. And he still does truly care. He cares about what happens to each and every one of us. Luke 23 34. And I said the greatest love was John 3.16. But I really have to look at Luke 23.24 because it says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Now, if I'm on the cross and I'm getting whipped and I'm getting ready to get a spear in my side, I don't know I'd be that generous with Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Nor would I be as generous with my love as if <coughs> Casey and Connie and Nick and, and the rest of you said crucify him. Crucify him. Let that murderer grow, but crucify him. And I think about that a lot because why? He never did anything wrong. He never lied. He never did nothing but bring the truth with love, healing, casting out the demons. It was all good, but yet they didn't want that. And today I see people, I see churches pushing him to the side <coughs> so the churches can rise. Well, they're only going to rise for a short time and then they're going to fall. Amen. And the same's going to happen with us. 
if we do not accept what Jesus has. It's really easy for us to sometimes look around and say, yeah, I, I believe what's going on is okay, but you know, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for church. I don't have time to get on my knees and pray. I don't have, I, one of these days, the love of God is going to be pulled back because he's going to come and take those who are ready. Mm -hmm. And when he does, let me tell you, you think it's bad now? This is the walk in the fire. Because when the spirit of God leaves, <coughs> the devil's going to have a free-for-all. And when that happens, it's not going to be good. Because there will be no praying mamas. There will be no praying dads. There will be no praying churches. It's all going to be total chaos. God loved us enough to willingly go to the cross. Willingly to die. Willing to share his blood for each and every one of us here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that, Father. Don't push his love to the side. We enjoy it when the kids all come together and we get together and we have our fun time. Anybody else like that? <laughs> um, it's always nice to see them go home too. <laughs> yeah. But I'll be honest, I, I would do almost anything for our kids. But there's nothing I could do that Jesus has done for them already. That's right. And if I did try to do it, it wouldn't be the same. <clears throat> and in closing, I want you to think about the cross. Mm. What it was like. I, I looked up the other day what it was the nails that they used to nail him to the cross. And I think about railroad spikes. You know, they're about this big around. That's not what they used. The Roman spikes were about this big around. About this long. And when they drove him into him to hang him on that cross, I was thinking about the pain that must have been coming. Now granted, he already went through a bunch of pain prior to that with the stripes, the 39 or the 40. First. And I want to know, want you to know this. He was worth every stripe. Amen. He was worth every time they hit that nail with the hammer to hold him on the cross. Or he would have called the 72,000 angels to say, stop it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He loved you that much. Amen. Jesus loved. Let's follow Jesus. Yeah. Let's Amen. follow his love. Amen. Amen. Amen.